Okay, we're here today on realagriculture.com with Ross McKenzie. I'm uh, Ross McKenzie. I'm a senior research scientist with Aubrey Agriculture at Lethbridge. And most of our research work is really agronomy related. We do quite a bit of uh, soil fertility and fertilizer research and a lot of agronomy uh, work with both irrigated and dryland crops. And our uh, dryland crop work, production work, uh, actually we do uh, trial right from uh, Southern Alberta all the way up into the Peace River country. So we have uh, quite a wide area that we actually do our research. Okay, Ross, we're uh, going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, soil today. Um, there's a lot of discussion out there um, from some groups regarding uh, the impact of uh, GM or transgenic crops on, uh, on the soil. Um, there's criticisms such as loss of topsoil, compaction, those kind of things. Can you kind of comment a little bit about soil management in, in that situation? Uh, well, maybe even just to kind of go back in history and kind of look, uh, uh, depending on how we manage our agricultural lands, you know, we've uh, seen certain uh, farming systems that have been very detrimental on our soils. And if we go back even to the, uh, uh, the turn of the, uh, the 20th century, when we first started to uh, develop agriculture and expand agriculture into Western Canada, one of the farming systems that was adopted was the wheat fallow system. And uh, it actually worked out uh, very well for farmers. Uh, in that first uh, 20 or 30 years, they would leave, leave their land idle every other year for wheat control and allowed organic matter to break down and release nutrients uh, for the next year's crop. And it was a system that initially worked uh, quite well, but by the time we hit the dirty 30s, organic matter was uh, uh, declining, soil quality was declining, we had uh, droughts, and uh, then there was uh, extended periods of, uh, of massive wind erosion. And so that's, that farming system turned out to be uh, a complete disaster. We still use it, um, but most farmers have kind of shifted more to uh, uh, continuous cropping, which is certainly a wise thing. You're cropping your land every year. Uh, we also knew that after about 40 years of the wheat fallow system, basically all the organic matter in the soil had been, all of the soil organic matter that could, could easily break down and release nutrients has been uh, mined from the soil, then we had to start to fertilize. And people often wondered, well, why do we put fertilizer on? And that's the reason why we put it on, is to provide the nutrients for crops. And um, So we've uh, shifted our farming systems from uh, wheat fallow to continuous cropping and then to, uh, to fertilizing. But probably the one big advantage in terms of soil quality is the shift from uh, conventional cultivation to direct seeding. And in a survey by uh, Stats Canada in 2006 showed that more than half of Alberta farmers were direct seeding. More than two-thirds of farmers in Saskatchewan were direct seeding. And that's probably the one single uh, big sh uh, technological shift uh, from conventional to direct seeding that has re really helped to improve soil quality. No longer we uh, excessively cultivate in our soils. That's going to help to build soil organic matter. Fertilizing helps to build soil organic matter. So when we're using these systems to improve soil quality, that's much better. So we can kind of look at farming systems that can be beneficial to our soils or farming systems that uh, may not be beneficial. In terms of, uh, of using GM crops versus uh, conventional crops, um, in my mind it's probably very unlikely uh, that GM crops alone would have a, a negative or detrimental effect on, on soil quality. There might be other environmental issues of concern, but from a soil standpoint, as long as you're managing that GM crop by, by uh, direct seeding, uh, fertilizing adequately to replace the nutrients that are uh, removed from that soil, uh, keeping in mind that those GM crops are going to be healthy, adding organic matter to the soil with the, the roots and the, uh, uh, the crop residue, the straw and the leaves that are returned after the crop is harvested. There's really no uh, good reason to think that uh, a GM crop would be uh, more de detrimental to the soil versus a, a conventionally seeded crop, as long as it, it's well managed. So how is, uh, you know, in terms of uh, soil compaction, you know, that's a, always a criticism is that really, like I think what you're saying is that no matter what kind of seed or what kind of crop or farming system you're following, um, as long as you're managing it properly, um, yep. you're, you, the soil's going to be taken care of. That's right. And, and when we talk about soil compaction, there's really uh, several different ways soil can become compacted. One is just by simply cultivating the soil and uh, when the cultivator is running through the soil, especially if that soil is... Uh, um, fairly moist, uh, just when that cultivator shovel is, uh, the way that shovel is, is pressing on that uh, uh, soil below it, that can cause soil compaction. And uh, so in that case then it's just a matter of managing your soils. Uh, first of all, not uh, cultivating your soils, like and if you can eliminate cultivation and just use direct seeding. And then instead of using sweeps, use uh, uh, points to uh, reduce that compaction. When you're actually direct seeding, you can keep your, uh, your compaction from that uh, tillager seeding operation to a minimum. The other type of uh, compaction we see is uh, with actual farm implements, like the weight of a, of a tractor or the, the weight of the, uh, the tires on a, 
on a cart um, with a direct seeder or if uh, a farmer is spraying manure or grain trucks are traveling across the field when the soils are fairly moist, uh, the impact of the weight of, the, of any farm machine can actually uh, penetrate down to 20 to 24 inches causing compaction. And you might just see that initial effect uh, in the, the upper surface soil but that, that weight of that equipment can actually transfer if the soils are quite moist down to as much as uh, two feet. So then we have to be careful to um, when we're uh, moving equipment across fields that it, when the soils are, are wet we know we're going to cause some compaction. So what are some of the ways we can uh, avoid that? Well, um, you know, tractor tire pressure is one thing. Uh, the size of the equipment, um, just watching the, the weights of the equipment. Um, uh, I'm just trying to think of some of the other things that uh, farmers can drive. Probably a really good one is not driving on the same, if you're driving you're on your grain truck, yeah. don't use that, drive on that same path across your field. You know, just shift over you know, the, the width of the truck every time so you're not actually uh, causing compaction at the same spot all the time. So there's a number of things we can do, but really just kind of really watching the weight of our equipment and yeah. uh, things like that for compaction. So you mentioned that we've seen some of the benefits from uh, continuous cropping. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what are some of the benefits? Well, probably the big benefit of continuous cropping is that we're not disturbing that soil. When we disturb the soil, we're basically uh, mixing that soil up, aerating the soil. That stimulates microbes to uh, start to uh, break down organic matter a little bit more quickly. So if we reduce our tillage, uh, which is not a, a natural, if we can uh, direct seed, so minimize our tillage, uh, then any organic matter that's added to the soil in the way of roots and, and, uh, and residue will gradually increase improving the soil organic matter. And organic matter has two huge benefits to the soil. Number one, um, that soil organic matter tends to kind of act like a glue to bind soil particles together to improve the structure of the soil. If we improve the physical structure of the soil, um, that's going to prevent wind and water erosion, it's going to improve the, uh, the aggregate size of the soil, it's going to be uh, more accepting of um, rain when it comes in, it can be less runoff and better um, water penetration. So that's a, just, the soil will just have a better granular crumb structure. Though. So the physical benefit is huge. And then the other benefit is organic matter is really a storehouse of nutrients. Almost all the nitrogen in our soil, in the, in the topsoil, is uh, uh, tied up in the organic matter. About half the phosphorus, about half the sulfur, and a considerable amount of the, the micronutrients are in the organic matter. So as that organic matter is slowly breaking down and turning over, it's releasing nutrients for crop growth. So uh, the organic matter can improve the physical structure of the soil and it can also improve the, uh, the fertility or the chemical uh, quality of the soil as well.